Is there ever really a benefit to running two, three, four times rated power to a subwoofer? Should you run just RMS or should you run twice or two times RMS? The manufacturer puts the RMS rating for the subwoofer because he's basically telling you that this subwoofer can operate at this RMS level, this continuous power level, without harming, in, harming itself if it's in the proper enclosure. The RMS rating is to tell you what the soft parts, the soft parts, the voice coil, the tensor leads, the voice coil former, what electrical current, AC current, that they can handle continuously without overheating and destroying themselves. Heat is the enemy to electricity. Heat is the enemy to electricity. So they give you an RMS rating to tell you exactly what that subwoofer can handle continuously to day testing. Some manufacturers, uh, particularly, well, all manufacturers, all subwoofer manufacturers or engineers, designers, whatever you want to call them, uh, underrate their subs just slightly, some tremendously, and there's a reason why they do that. For the new boys, the, I don't know, Sundown, B2 Audio, uh, the, uh, what's that, Death Bounce, they severely underrate their subwoofer so that you will be amazed at the power they can handle. For instance, like if I tell you this subwoofer can handle 500 watts RMS, but you know that you can put 1,000 watts to it, then you feel like, oh, I got a superior sub. When, because I'm putting twice the rated power to it and there's nothing's happening to it. When they could have just told you that in the get-go. They could have told us that from the beginning. Hey, man, this is an eight little voice call. Uh, I got trip spiders on it. <laughs> this form was bumped up tensile leads. Just, they could have just told you from the get-go, hey, man, this sub can take this power. Uh, but most times, in most cases, it's never double RMS. It might be a quarter of what, a quarter more. So let's say that our subwoofer is rated at 500 watts RMS. It could do about maybe 100 to 175 watts more. So you really could do 650 or 700 uh, continuously. Some manufacturers don't underrate their subwoofers at all. They tell you what the RMS rating is and tell you what the max is. And the max is just for a short burst. And most of the time, it's double what the RMS rating is. So some manufacturers, in particular like SCAR, you want to use them for example. Kevin rates his subs pretty much on point. They're not going to take twice as rated or triple rated RMS rating. If he said it take this much power, that's pretty much what it will take. It can take twice that on a, on a short burst. That's like a second or two. When, you, when, when people use it for SPL purposes, they just burp it real quick. It's sometimes three, four times the rated power, but they're not paying it that power continuously. Continuously is like when you get inside your vehicle, the RMS rating is when you get inside your vehicle, turn your radio on, and whether it's playing 500 watts or 300 watts, depending on what volume setting you got your, your knob in, it can take that continuously. So if it can take 500 watts RMS, it can take 400 watts RMS, 300 watts, 200 watts. You don't have to run it at the RMS rating. You can send less power to it as long as it's clean power. There's a myth that says if you don't run, if you've got a 500-watt sub and you put on a 250-watt amp, you're going to damage the sub. No, you're not. If you got the amp set to just deliver 250 watts, which is what it's rated to do, you're not going to hurt the subwoofer by playing it under what it's rated at. You hurt the subwoofer by playing it under what it's rated at if you got a 250-watt amplifier. And I forgot what the the AC voltage on that is. But let's say you turn the gain up to try to get the gain to what well, 25 by 25. That's that's like five 
20 by 20 is 400. So 25 by 25 is like 500 and something. 20 by 20 is 400. 25 by 25 is like, I think it's like 600 some watts. Well, if your app is rated to deliver uh, uh, 250 watts, well, let's just say 400 watts. If your app is rated to deliver 400 watts, then your AC voltage needs to be 20, 19, or 18. It does not need, your AC voltage at the speaker terminals does not need to be greater than 20. Because 20 times 20 is 400. Okay? If you got anything greater than 20, then you taking an amplifier that's rated to give 400 watts, and you're trying to make it give out more power. Then you're going to hurt the subwoofer, because anything over 20 volts AC, you are sending a clip signal to the subwoofer. So if you got an amplifier, you got a sub that's rated 500 watts. You got an amplifier that's rated 500 watts or under, and you had it set correctly to deliver the power it's rated at, you're not going to hurt the subwoofer. You hurt the subwoofer when it's a clip signal. Okay. Now, let's say you got a 1,000 watt amp and a subwoofer that handles 500 watts on this. And you say, man, I like to send twice rated to my subs. You're not going to do that continuously. Because most, like I say, most subwoofer manufacturers, they tell you exactly what close, very close to what they know the subwoofer can handle with no problems. Some manufacturers like Kicker, J Audio, they'll tell you exactly what's the optimum range. They give you their subwoofer optimum range right here. And then they tell you you go up here, you're going to void the warranty because they have not rated the sub to handle that much power. But it can for short periods of time if you know how to bag off and turn up. With your knob. When people tell you, man, you're going to hurt a subwoofer by underpowering, do you ride, when you get in your vehicle, do you ride around with your vehicle full tilt all the time? No. So then you, so then technically you are underpowering the sub. If you got a rare amp that's rated 500 watts and the subwoofer is rated 500 watts, but you don't ride around with your volume crank full at 500 watts every time you get in the vehicle, if you turn it down at the gas station or, or turn it down just because you want to, it's not, I don't want to be, I don't want to impress nobody right now. I just want to ride it at this listening level. Well, then your app is not giving 500 watts if you turn the volume down. So then technically you're on the power the subwoofer. Are you hurting the sub? No. You're only hurting the sub if you ask the amplifier to give out more power than what it's rated at. As far as running twice rated power to a subwoofer, it's good to a point to have headroom as long as your amplifier is getting clean power. You got a 500 sub that's rated 500 watts. Now this this audio legion is rated 400 watts RMS. I can send that to it all day long. I know that also audio legion kind of underrates they sub. Not twice rated. They not. It's not gonna do 800 watts continuous like it would do 400. But it might do 500. But now you're pushing the envelope. You're pushing the envelope of what the soft parts can handle. So in can. I ain't going to say in conclusion, should I run arm twice rated to a sub if you're only going to burp it and you know how to use that volume knob and turn down and know that, okay, I'm running twice the rated power that was going to, to what my sub is rated at. So it's going to do that for about two or three songs. Then the, then the soft part's going to start to heat up. The glue going to start to unwind. The former going to start, the, the, the voice cord going to start to unwind on the former. Now you got a damaged sub. So you can run more power if you know how to turn back every now and then. Turn it down. You know, use just for demo purposes when you want to go extremely, extremely loud. You can put a thousand watt amp on this uh, on this four hundred watt sub, but you're not going to set it to get four hundred thousand watts all the time. Sometimes you're going to have it at a, at a reasonable listening level. Uh, running twice rated pretty much is for burp purposes. Running the rated power, continuously power, that's what the sub is designed for, RMS power. If it's not loud enough, buy you another one. If those two ain't loud enough, buy you another one. If you have enough space to keep adding subwoofers, buy you another one. Or increase the cone area. Me, I like to run pretty much my sub's rated power. Rated clean power. I like to see clean power beats clipping power. On the meter and to the ear all day long. Clean power beats dirty power on the meter and to the ear every day, all day. Good illustration. Home theater systems. Home audio systems. The amplifier is on the rated 500 watts. Split between two subs. 
Kenwood, Sony, Pioneer, Harmon Carlin, the amplifier, that little own amplifier that he put on the rack. It's 500 watts. Split between two subs and the mid ranges and the tweeter. They split, they split in 500 watts. Rocks the entire house. 500 watts. Rocks the entire house. And it'd be two twelves, a mid range and a tweeter, in each one of those speaker cabinets set wherever you got them set in the room. That file only living 500 watts. Rocks the entire house. Your neighbor's calling the police. <laughs> Man, turn that down. Unless you throw in a party, come over in and get something to smoke and eat with you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 500 watts. So clean power is what I'm trying to say. Clean power. 500 watts clean would be 1,000 watts dirty all day long. 500 watts with a high dampening factor and a good signal-to-noise ratio would be 1,000 watts with a low signal-to-noise ratio and hardly no dampening factor. Clean power. So in conclusion, I would suggest just run rated power to your subs. If it's loud not enough, if it's loud, loud loud enough, do two things. Increase the cone area or increase the number of subs you have and keep the same arm is rating. This 400 watts. Run two on an 800 watt or 1,000 watt amplifier. 1,000 watts, 500 watts. It don't handle 100, it don't handle 100. Most subs are handled. Whatever their rating wattage rod, is, most good subs, reputable subs, are handled 100, 150 more. If you want to burp it, yeah, you can send two or three. If you're into SPL, and that's, and most people on my channel, y'all know, y'all not in, y'all not even watch. Most guys are going for SPL on crazy numbers. They not watching me. They not street beaters. They know they can send 2,000 watts to this sub on a bird. They know what kind of enclosure to put it in. They'll send 3,000 watts to it on a bird. On a bird. Bam! And stop. They might do it two or three times, and then the sub is toast. Okay? Cause those, those, those guys, you're not on my channel. You're not watching my channel. If you are, you know, he's telling y'all something good. But he's right. I really don't need to know that because I know I can see it six times rated power in the sub I put in the right enclosure. But those of you that are just street beaters, just run rated power, maybe a little bit more. Whatever the sub is rated at, get your amp that's maybe 150, 200 watts more and know that you're going to have to back down sometime because when the when when the voice core heats up, heat is the enemy leg twisting. You're going to lose output. Peace. Comment, like, subscribe, share. Thanks for watching my channel. Um, I'm growing. Uh, I'm, getting, <laughs> I'm getting a good little following here. I'm getting noticed. Uh, thank you. Thank all of you. Like, subscribe, share. Uh, let's keep it organic and keep it real. NBN closes, man. If you need a box, get at me, man. 404-694-4818. 404-694-4818.